Today on Retro Bassin, we're going to talk about one of my favorite lure lines and favorite styles of fishing, and that is throwing Rebel ultralight critters like these for bass, panfish, and perch on ultralight tackle. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. It should really come as no surprise that ultralight, or UL fishing, originated in France. Their anglers in the mid-1930s utilized tiny spinners and spinnerfly combinations to target trout and perch in small streams. Historian Hans van der Poel had a great article that I will link in the video description, which details a number of French books and publications talking about early ultralight techniques. Now just what is ultralight is a little bit of a moving target, but in general, we are talking about light lines in the six pound or less category and lures less than a quarter ounce. Growing up chasing white perch, yellow perch, sunfish, and chain pickerel in the waters of the Severn and Magothy rivers, to me ultralight fishing was just pretty much the way that I fished 90% of the time. And spending much of the 1990s pouring over Bass Pro Shops master catalogs I was captivated by the amazing selection of ultralight critters offered by Rebel Lures. While I am by no means an expert on Rebel Lure history, today we're going to take a little walk down the ultralight offerings by Rebel from the mid-1970s on up to the present day. By the way, there are definitely going to be some holes in my timeline as we're just going through the Bass Pro Shops massive catalogs that I have in my personal collection. The first catalog that I've got and the first one in which I saw a Rebel Ultralight was the 1978 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. The Ultralight offering from Rebel was a trout pan sized version of the Rebel Minnow. But at one and a half inch and one sixteenth of an ounce, this little bait definitely categorizes as Ultralight. I do have one of these in my collection. This one is left over. I don't know exactly how old this was. Clearly, it's not built in the 70s, but this is that model F49 Rebel Minnow. This is a mean looking little minnow bait. <laughs> it is almost like a uh, Rebel Minnow had a little batch of fry, and this thing's about two weeks old. But this is a nice little inch and a half bait. It's got some nice chrome sides and a blue chrome top. And we'll compare this to some other Rebel Minnows that I have in my collection. So here is a more standard, uh, traditional size Rebel Minnow, as well as a bigger saltwater version. So let's go ahead and get the regular Rebel Minnow out. And then we'll compare it to its little mini-me. <laughs> Look at that. I don't have any Bass Pro Master Catalogs between 1978 and 1984, so I don't know if this was the only ultralight bait offered during that time, but as far as I can tell, this was definitely the first. Six years later in 1984, the only ultralight added to the Rebel lineup was an inch and a half, one tenth of an ounce version of the Wee Crawl called the Teeny Wee Crawl. Here is my shallow version of a teeny wee crawl in a very uh, interesting color, one that I don't see too, too often. Uh, this is that same inch and a half, one tenth of an ounce bait, obviously a shallow running bait, which uh, is money in some little streams anywhere bass or panfish are chasing after little scooting crayfish. For 1985 and 1986, the Rebel Minnow and Teeny Wee Crawl are the only two UL Rebels featured in Bass Pro Shops. But in 1988, a few new models joined the lineup. First was a deep Teeny Wee R, and that became the first ultralight deep runner offered by Rebel. Here is a version of that deep Teeny Wee R, and you can see that thing definitely has a much bigger bill on it 
than its shallow cousin. While you might think this is a great bait for deep water, according to Rebel, it's actually a really good bait for shallow water as well because this deep lip really caused that bait to dig into the bottom and look a whole lot like a fleeing crawfish. Also in 1988, expanding the wee frog line introduced the year before was an inch and a half, one eighth ounce teeny wee frog. This bait was released in three different colors in 1988 and the only one I currently have in my collection is this one, which is, I'm pretty sure, a bullfrog pattern of the teeny wee frog. Good looking little bait, and you can imagine this thing runs probably, what, less than a foot under the water, but is probably just as effective twitching on top. Nice little yellow belly, and a natural top. <laughs> I always love, by the way, the hole they had in the legs for these things. <laughs> The next few years were really the golden era of the Rebel Ultralights, and in 1989, the Crick Hopper and the Creek Creature were both added to the lineup. Both these releases were bold in their own way. Minnows, crayfish, and frogs have long been staples of bass lore designs, but crickets? Not so much. Here is a Crick Hopper from my personal collection in uh, some sort of natural pattern. It does have a little diving lip on it and will dive to three feet, but the primary technique for this bait is actually to cast it out there and twitch it on the top, sort of like a grasshopper that jumped too close to the lake. Then there was the Creek Creature, a two inch sculpin imitation that had the unique quality of being a sinking crankbait. While I don't have any Creek Creatures on hand, I do have a few on the way from one of my tackle shop stops and as soon as they arrive, I'll definitely get them on the creek. 1991 has to be one of my favorite all-time spreads of the Rebel Ultralights, with the addition of one of my all-time favorites, the Caddercrawler. And what I love about some of these recent baits is that Rebel didn't just slap a diving bill on some different creature shapes, but really designed each bait differently from the ground up. The Caddercrawler came in five colors, including woolly bear, catalpa worm, grub worm, earthworm, and zebra caterpillar. This is a discontinued bait, but I do have a couple of Caddercrawlers new in the package and out of the package as well. Here is one of my all-time favorites, the uh, Caddercrawler in the grub worm pattern. Here's one in a clear earthworm pattern. Here is one in a catalpa worm pattern. Here's an original Caddercrawler that I probably had in my tackle box since about 1991 or 92. And this thing has caught plenty of perch and panfish for me. What's neat about this bait is that when you cast it out, it sinks, but it sinks very slowly. And almost sort of quivers as it's sinking, sort of like a little mini Senko almost. You can reel this thing, it does have a flat, but you can reel it and it'll twitch like a crankbait. You can also sort of throw this thing out, sink it, twitch it, sink it, and twitch it. This was a money little bait that I was sorry to see them discontinue. I do have a handful of these uh, in my tackle box still, and I definitely throw them every chance I get when I'm not too nervous about losing one. 1992 brought the same basic lineup with a redesigned creek creature sporting a new lip with an embedded BB. There's no mention of this redesign, so I can't say what led to this change so early in the bait's history. In 1995, Rebel added yet another creepy crawler to the lineup, this time a one and three quarter inch, one tenth of an ounce Helgramite. Like the Creek Creature, this is a sinking mini crank that is designed to scoot along the bottom of shallow creeks and streams. Here is a Rebel Helgramite from my Mini Magnum Tackle Box, and I just love the design of this bait. Everything from the body shape, the color, right down to these little soft appendages. This is a really neat crankbait to fish. I don't know if this is discontinued or just hard to find. I know that there are none available on the LoreNet website, so I had to go to a third-party buyer to get my hands on a few of these. My 1997 catalog highlights a dynamite spread of the four main Rebel Ultralights, including the Teeny Wee Frog, the Crick Hopper, the Creek Creature, and 
the Helgramite. Three of my favorite Rebel Ultralights, the Tad Fry, the Big Ant, and the Bumblebug, were released in the years that followed. Unfortunately, I don't have master catalogs in that era, so I don't know exactly what year those baits were released. The Tad Fry was a neat little bait that resembled uh, almost like a miniature tadpole. I had a few of those back in the day, but I since uh, lost those somewhere along the way and have not replaced them in my collection. The Big Ant is pretty much what its name implies, a big ant-shaped uh, crankbait. And this one is discontinued, and yeah, this is a tough bait to get. Here's a Big Ant out of the package, this in a black ant pattern. This is a floating crankbait sporting a really robust lip for an ultralight. Neat little bait. This thing definitely has a little bit of weight to it. I would suspect that this thing is heavier than most Rebel Ultralights because for me it casts a lot better. And because of that tail, it is super buoyant. The Bumblebug is another favorite and that one luckily is still available today from Rebel. Here is one new old stock Rebel Bumblebug. Uh, it even has a nice little Bumblebug sticker on it. This one in a Ladybug pattern. The Bumblebug came in a number of different colors to match the hatch, and I've still got a good few of these in my collection, including Bumblebee, Wasp, Ladybug, Horsefly, and Junebug. Unfortunately, competition for old Rebels is fierce. And finding discontinued Rebels still on the peg, well, they're about as rare as hen's teeth. I do have a few new on the card Rebel Ultralights, and for this episode of Retro Bastion, we're gonna try something a little bit different. As you guys know, I definitely spend a little bit of time buying stuff on eBay, so I thought uh, I would switch it up this week and sell a few things on the eBay. So there are two different Rebel lore lots that I will have listed by the time this video uploads, and I'll show those to you right now. First auction is going to be for these four new old stock Rebels. We've got two Catacrawlers, one in the Earthworm, one in the Grubworm, as well as a Bumblebug and a Chromed Out Crick Popper. That's a neat looking bait. Uh, next auction, and I'm probably going to regret this one just a little bit, I am putting up four new old stock Rebel Big Ants. <laughs> and actually in four different colors. We've got the Red Ant, the Grub Worm, the Chrome, and the Black. <sighs> yeah, I'm already kind of regretting putting that one up to be honest with you. I will drop a link for these two auctions down below in the video description, and I'm going to list them both at one dollar plus shipping and we'll see what happens next week i am going to get on the water with a lot of the rebel baits that we talked about today but if you're looking for some more old school content click here otherwise i'll see you next week and until then keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school fishing it old school this old stuff rules welcome to retro Bastion.